Hello and welcome to our online service for Sunday the 13th of June 2021. It's great to have you with us again. Now we are going to be taking communion towards the end of the service. Uh, so at some point if you want to pause this video and get yourself some bread, some wine or some fruit juice, whatever you want to, to use, uh, then we can be ready to take communion together when that particular time comes. In the meantime, we're going to listen to our first song. It's a song of confidence in God. It's a great song to hold on to our hearts at this moment in time. It's Day of Victory. So Heavenly Father, we thank you for that wonderful confidence that we can have in you that gives us the ability to face our todays, the ability to face our tomorrows, the ability to know that whatever comes our way, we have you on our side. In Jesus' name, thank you, Father. Now I'm going to read to you a familiar passage of scripture that we use a lot at communion time. It's 1 Corinthians 11, verses 23 to 28. 
The Apostle Paul is speaking. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper he took the cup saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then Whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. And with those words ringing in our ears, we move to our second song, which is a song of commitment to God. It's a song of, a song of faith and appealing to him to live in our lives. It's what we need to do as we come around the communion table to make sure that he is at the centre of our lives. If perchance you're not a Christian at this moment in time, this is a great song that you can use as a prayer to come to faith. Lord, reign in me. Sunset sky, but my one request, Lord, my only aim is that you reign in me again, Lord, reign in me, reign in your power over all my dreams in my darkest hour.
great, isn't it? It's one of our favourite songs here in Emmanuel. We sing it quite a lot, and as I've said so often before, if you want to listen to any of these songs again, you can find them on our YouTube channel on the Worship Songs That Bless Us playlist. They're all there for you. 44 songs, I think there are on there now. Now, communion was the second of the sacraments that Jesus instigated during his ministry on earth. The first was baptism. Now, a sacrament is simply a physical act that demonstrates a God-given blessing. So you could easily add the laying on of hands or marriage to that list of sacraments too. One of the differences between baptism and breaking of bread, though, is that baptism is inaugural for the believer. It happens usually at the beginning of our walk with God, and it only happens once. Whereas breaking of bread, or communion if you prefer, other traditions call it Eucharist and Mass of course, is continual. As the Apostle Paul put it during the course of our reading, whenever you eat the bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. It was also the third of the four precepts that the new church adopted immediately after Pentecost, coming after the Apostles' teaching, and after fellowship and before prayer, those four things were, four things, were the very nub of what the church did in those early days. Like baptism, the breaking of bread was not a strange concept to those early Christians. It was first mentioned actually way back in Abraham's day there, almost at the beginning of the Old Testament. Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was priest of God Most High, and he blessed Abraham, saying, Blessed be Abraham, by God Most High, creator of heaven and earth. Melchizedek there in uh, Genesis 14, 18-19, was a type of Christ. Not actually Christ, but like him, being king and priest, without human ancestry and without mortality and he was giving bread and wine to Abraham as a blessing in the same way Jesus gave his disciples the bread and wine at the last supper as a blessing to them giving them part of him in the elements that he gave them in the same way still it is a God-given blessing to us and still, God imparts something of himself, although not literally, of course, in the emblems that we take. That bread, that wine. That's why we should never neglect it or take it lightly. Breaking bread is significant in the past and present and future tenses. Looking back in remembrance, you don't need me to tell you that breaking of bread actually has two parts to it. There's bread and there's wine quite obviously. They represent the twofold sacrifice that Jesus made. His body was broken and his blood was spilt for us. We've spoken so many times of our merit as sinners to have that natural consequence of death that comes from it. Both Testaments agree with that. In the Old Testament, Ezekiel 18.4, the soul who sins is the one who will die. In the New Testament, Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death. But that was never what God intended. It wasn't in his design for human beings. And in mercy, he has always provided an escape route. So that while we are sinners and while we have breath, we can repent and turn back to God and receive the gift of eternal life. Throughout the Old Testament, that way out was done through animal sacrifices. The, their bodies were broken and their blood was shed. And although that sacrifice regime went on for century after century, it was only ever going to be temporary. The only way that a permanent solution could be found was for the sinless Son of God himself to become our sacrifice. Hebrews 10.10 10, By God's will we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. The breaking of Jesus' body signified the end of the need for that annual sacrifice and the shedding of his blood heralded a new order. Mark 14, 24, Jesus said this, this is my blood of the new covenant which is poured out for many. 
And the Apostle Paul endorsed that. 1 Corinthians 11.25, in the same way after supper, Jesus took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. A covenant is a solemn binding agreement. It is very heavy duty and it requires confirmation by a sign or by an oath. And Jesus delivered both of those things. In the last supper came the oath. In the crucifixion came the sign. On the cross, Jesus shouted, it is finished. A kind of business term for a contract being made complete. The broken body was at the end of one covenant. The shed blood was at the start of a new era of grace that we live in even now. Perhaps that's why we take the emblems that way around. Bread first, wine later, because the bread represents the ending of the old covenant and the wine represents the beginning of the new. Good, isn't it? In the present tense, we have do this. This sacrament was meant to be repetitive, just as the Old Testament sacrifices were. But whilst they were annual, we are meant to be much more frequent with the breaking of bread. The NIV says, whenever. The authorised version, as often. It means the same thing. Breaking bread is supposed to be like stitching. I'm not a sewing person. I don't know how to sew particularly well, but my mother did. And I used to watch her doing it all the time. It was great. The secret of good stitching that holds two pieces of cloth together is that the stitching must be continual, repetitive, frequent, and tight. Those stitches it's one single piece of thread, isn't it? And those stitches need to be continual, repetitive, frequent and tight. Otherwise the repair just will not work or the dress will not be made properly. In that regard, it is the same thing with communion, our common union. Stitching us together to each other and with God. Yeah, you know, we get some great teaching in the New Testament from the books of 1 and 2 Corinthians. Uh, great teaching of how to be a great church because they quite frankly weren't. The Apostle Paul even tells them at one stage that their meetings do more harm than good. Sounds a bit harsh, doesn't it? So in 1 Corinthians 11, 17 to 22, immediately before the reading that we had earlier, he tries to bring some discipline into what they were doing around the breaking of bread. It's fair to say that the New Testament church didn't do breaking of bread as we do. It's fairly emblematic for us, a small piece of bread, a sip of wine, but they used to involve it into a, a fellowship meal. The closest we get to it is the occasional lunches that we have. A wonderful time, nonetheless. The chaos at Corinth included some people missing out altogether while some were overindulging. And that was dishonouring both to the church and dishonouring to God too. And the Apostle Paul rebuked them, as we read in verse 27 of 1 Corinthians 11. So then, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. It is why there is a need to heed Paul's warning and to put our lives right before God and with each other before we come round the communion table. We can't honour God if we are not honouring one another. And we can't fully honour one another unless we are fully honouring God. Think about that. We come to the table at his invitation and we eat together as equals around that table. That's fellowship. That's why it was intrinsic to the early church and that's why it should be a priority for us. Life communion in church is one thing that I'm really looking forward to getting back to when all of the COVID-19 restrictions have been lifted from us. Every time we take communion now, as in Paul's day, we proclaim his death and what it means to us. And sharing it together, we restate our commitment to each other. Romans 12, 5. So in Christ, we, though many, form one body and each member belongs to to all the others. Think about that. Think how powerful that is. 
Now, if need be, during times of illness or perhaps when we are alone, and certainly as we've been during the course of the, uh, the pandemic arrangements, we have to take communion solo. And that's not a terrible thing because there are other people around the world, millions of Christians around the world who are also taking communion together and we join in with that metaphorically. But it is better by far if we can come together and do that in the presence of God in union with each other. It is our common union with each other and our common union with God. But we won't be doing it forever. Jesus is coming again, hallelujah. And that puts the brakes on the breaking of bread. All sacraments are time limited. In heaven there will be no baptism, no marriage, no communion. They simply won't be needed. We won't need to remember the broken body and shed blood of Christ when we are with him face to face. Whenever we get there, however we get there. We won't need to keep the stitching going as we will be physically present with him and in total harmony with all the saints that have gone before us or go with us. And neither can I say is it about the formality or informality of the way that we do communion. There is no right or wrong process for it. I said a moment ago, the chances are that we don't do it as the New Testament church did it anyway. It's not about how, it's about how our heart is when we take those emblems. It's not about the emblems used either. I'm using a chapati and some summer fruit squash today. They are bread and wine. They will be broken and shed in the same way that Jesus' blood was, not literally, of course. It's about being a sign of our common union with each other and with God. So as the next song plays, let's spend some time giving thanks to God for the sacrifice that Jesus made for us and the fact that we can live in the power of that sacrifice as represented in these emblems.
So, Heavenly Father, we thank you for these emblems. We thank you for your sacrifice that gave them to us. And we thank you because of the power of what they represent. In Jesus' name, amen. So, if you have your bread and your wine ready, let's break bread together. And we take our wine. And as we remembered the breaking of his body in the breaking of our bread, we remember the shedding of his blood in the taking of this emblem that we have before us. Father, as we conclude our time together, I pray that you will keep the preciousness of our common union in the middle of our hearts and minds so that we may strengthen our fellowship with each other and with you. In Jesus' name. Of love, what depths 
It's a wonderful song in it to close our service with and I pray that as the next week unfolds the Lord will bless you and keep you and make his face to shine upon you that he will give you his strength his guidance his guarding and his peace in Jesus name take care <laughs>